Hi, do you see me? Yes. Cool. Okay. Um, should we just get started or? I see people joining still. Amber is also here. Welcome. <laughs> and I think Rob has had issues with the color, so he's coming back. But let's hope it works. It doesn't matter to me if he's colorful. It looks very happy. So, oh, there. <laughs> Just me saying that's better. Rob saying hello. Awesome. Thank you. And um, first of all, so I'm very, very, very so excited. I cannot tell how excited I am to have this very first meeting. Um, oh, I'm getting emotional, which is kind of weird. <laughs> <clears throat> um, so I think everyone knows um, people who are, who are here because we have that meeting doc. I don't think you have met Josh yet. And um, so I'm gonna share um, the doc so you can see everyone who's here. They have done this little uh, introduction um, so you can meet them because we only have 45 minutes. So we wanna make sure that we can go through all um, the meeting points. So Josh, do you wanna say hi? Oops, you're on mute, I think. Uh, I'm Josh Burkus. I'm co-chair of Tag Contributor Strategy. Um, I used to know a fair amount of ASL, but I've forgotten most of it. So hopefully this will be a chance for me to revive it. Cool. And I just posted the doc where everyone introduced themselves. So. Um... You can have a look at that. And uh, Rian, do you want to say hi? Because I don't think you're on that. Hi, um, I'm Rian. I am the tech lead for the mentoring of the um, tech contributor strategy, also helping out with mentoring. Um, yeah, glad to be here. Hi, Rian, you said you're helping with something? Sorry, I am the tech lead for. Uh, that I contribute to strategy and generally helping out in the community. This is in. Uh, can we can we talk about tag and what it means? T A G. Sure, I'll, I'll let a Josh respond that one because he's been doing this forever. Yeah, it stands for Technical Advisory Group. The CNCF has a number of volunteer committees that run things for the organization uh, and set policy. And ours is organized around helping projects grow and get contributors and build good open source projects. And diversity is part of that mission. Great, thank you, Suzanne. This is Rob. Do we have any examples? This is Rob Koch here, in case uh, you don't know me. Uh, I wonder if there are any examples set up in place where you talk about diversity and how it helps. And what do you want the advisory committees to have and not have in the CNCF projects? I, well, we have. I know there have been some uh, di um, 
diversity and inclusion initiative started, but I think this is like the broader and bigger one, right? So I know it, there has been some uh, interest in that, but just, you know, more about things that have, I mean, like we have a quote of Jay here, which has like the, Ma we're gonna talk about his Maori initiative and then, um, but like for dis disabilities, that's definitely the first one. Uh, I think, I don't know, I'm rambling. Josh, you know more, please help me out here before we get to the agenda. <laughs> no, no, that's that's correct. Um, uh, there's obviously been a lot of work in the code of conduct, but that's not under this tag. Yeah. Um, uh, aside from that, um, our only organized work on diversity has been more general work on uh, making new contributors welcome. But yeah, we can start by talking because we had that uh, as uh, there was interest. Uh, Ian last uh, time was asking question about Jay's initiative. And so Jay has this amazing initiative with uh, Maori youth and uh, he is basically the inspiration for this group because I was thinking like oh this is so amazing let's do something similar with the deaf and hard of hearing community so um, Jay do you want to tell a little bit about what you've been doing and what do you think maybe this group could learn from your efforts? Um, yeah sure, uh, well, kia ora e tifano. Uh, Herio no Ngati Apa me Ngati Tu Fari Tua Oku Iwi, uh, no Fanganui Aotearoa Aho ko Jay Tihima Toku Ingua. Uh, my name is Jay. I'm from um, from from based in Tauranga in New Zealand. Um, I just gave a little bit of an intro in Te Reo Māori, um, a language, uh, just basically introducing about who I am and my tribal connections and where I'm from, which is uh, quite customary in our culture to introduce ourselves and start um, making connections with others, especially when meeting for the first time. Um, yeah, thank you for the intro, Catherine. Um, to be honest, I'm a little bit nervous and, and, and very humbled um, that, that my work down here um, helped to inspire this initiative. I'm really excited about it as well. And um, yeah, looking forward to working with you all a bit closer on this. Um, just to be clear, because I've I see that there's um, quite a few things on the agenda. How long, roughly, would you like me to talk for? Because I've prepared some stuff, or I can just give a very high level introduction. Um, just go. I think like it's fine because I think I put a lot of my talking. Basically, I'm gonna everything that I say. It's in there already. It's the meeting notes as well. That's why it's so long. So okay. just go ahead, and we can always do Slack later on. It's important. Okay, cool. We want to learn from you. So well good. I'll, I'll try to keep it brief though. Um, cool. So a little bit of background. Um, most of my work has been with uh, youth and career and community development. So I don't have a tech background at all. Um, I was invited into the space um, by my friends and, and mentor at the time, Hippie Hacker, as part of um, IINZ, which is a small tech company um, based here in New Zealand. I also work alongside Rian with. And um, because of my work to try and create um, meaningful career pathways for people into the space is, um, yeah, why I, was, why I was invited to join. And I had never heard of open source um, before meeting Hippie, but I was really inspired by um, the culture and the values and the principles around um it being inclusive being transparent and collaborative in its design and i thought there was a lot about those core concepts that could relate well and benefit um, a lot of the communities that i work with um, so i work quite broadly across areas of education and industry and local government and different community organizations um, so i had to start quite broadly trying to understand Oh, sorry, just, just to back it up a little bit. Um, and I was, inv I was invited to um, be a part of the mentoring working group to try and create a mentoring initiative for Māori um, as a pathway into the space. And um, I later became the co-chair of the mentoring working group alongside um, Nate and a few, few others. 
um, and working part, as part of the TAG contributor strategy group as well. And yeah, because it was all new territory for me and I found pretty quickly it was new territory for a lot of others as well. Not many people that I interacted with in schools or businesses had even heard of open source, let alone cloud native or Kubernetes or any of these sorts of things. Um, I tried to go quite broadly to try and get an understanding about if there was even a need or an interest for it first before trying to create a program that might not necessarily meet the needs. Um, so I, I thought it might be easier um, as I'm talking to, to things to, um, I'll create a bit of a visual. So is it possible to share my screen for a couple of minutes and just give a bit of a background? Um, the only thing is with the interpreters will be a lot smaller. So I don't know how does, let's ask. Does it does the screen sharing mess up things or is it can you still see it and smaller? This is Ian. Uh, depends on your computer. If you have two monitors like I have, then I have the interpreter up there on a large screen screen. It really everybody it depends on everybody's uh, setup. Oh, okay. I can I can just talk to it. It's fine. Um yeah, so um yeah so just high level i guess we um started to I, I had a small project team working with me and so there's a quite a big research um phase just to try and understand what it was and how we could communicate it um kubernetes for instance which was our primary focus we found was like a very high um skill set required and um, although there's you know lots of good guides and documentation, um, found that engaging with young Maori, for instance, it wasn't necessarily going to be um, consistent with their learning styles, and you know some of the way that the ideas of even community and things were frames might be a little bit confusing. So we sort of went back to scratch and started to develop some um, basic learning resources. Um, we started um, creating and getting involved in different um, events around career pathways to try and test, um, you know, just introducing them to concepts like open source, giving examples of different um, open source software and platforms, um, and trying to sort of show the, like, the, the continuum and the scope of all the different opportunities that are available and try and get an understanding about what might be the way, uh, best way to help make things um, yeah, make a little bit more sense to people. So we're also working alongside um, local tertiary providers. There's a local institute of technology where, um, you know, one of the tutors, for instance, had a bit of experience and had even created some um, entry level programs to support people into things like or introduce people to like um, Raspberry Pis and open source. But because of, again, the lack of awareness and understanding, it had never been able to be implemented. Um, and then gradually started um, working in alongside like, local council and local tech businesses um, who are also interested in encouraging more people into the space and, and trying to have a bit more of a collective approach to it. So currently in New Zealand, there's about 4% participation from Māori in the in digital tech spaces in general and about 2.5% for uh, Pacific Islanders. So um, yeah, it's quite a, a universal sort of challenge. Um, and gradually it sort of branched out. So um, yeah, we've been running a series of events, running um, career development workshops with local youth providers. Um, and currently I'm working with a Māori Economic Development Agency and we're working with about um, 20 schools across the region at the moment to try and introduce um, the technology as well. So um, for the last few months, we've had an uh, intern with us that started, um, or oh, sorry, we had two students that were starting with us. One became our first um, mentee under the LFX program, which was a good understanding in terms of what other um, barriers we might need to navigate. And another one, um, our intern who's currently, or who's just started to work with me in the schools as well to start delivering um, that information directly. So yeah, things are expanding all the time um, and it's been good to, uh, more recently connect with Māori tech and, and digital collectives to again try and approach this um, you know these barriers 
a bit more collaboratively. And a lot of it is about the cultural consideration as well in terms of if we were to bring um, our people into the space, how can we do that in a way that doesn't just offer them great development opportunities, but is also culturally safe and consistent with our values as a people too. Um, and yeah, so also working now with one of the local universities, we've got um, an, an Indigenous data conference that we're planning for next month. Um, we're working with about 25 different STEAM providers to try and support with tech pathway development. I'm working with another regional council that we've got um, another event to create pathways for um, just outside the region. So all these sorts of things are starting to branch out. And the idea is, is that once you have a broader sort of understanding as a whole about what the need is and what is going to be the best way forward, then we can sort of narrow in and, you know, create a program that might be, you know, where it might be similar to existing, like the LFX program with the 10 week format, for instance, or is it something that is a little bit more um, consistent in alignment with the way that our people best learn and, you know, want, want to, um, want to transition in, into the space at all, whether it be micro credentialing or other things too. So, um, yeah, I think that hopefully gives a little bit of context. Um, I think I think overall, a lot of it is around education. Um, what ways can we better communicate these ideas? Um, what ways can we better get people involved in creating the educational resources? And again, telling not just the, the technical skill sets, but understanding holistically um, in consideration of our whole, whole order or entire Māori wellbeing what is going to be the best way to do that. And I think this basic framework connect is something to um, support our people, not just into tech, but into um, any industries with a bit more of those considerations in place. So yeah, that's me at the moment. Thank you. Thank you. That's really cool. <laughs> um, cool, yeah, and, and it, like, the great thing is like about creating these different initiatives within the CNCF is that the, we can all learn from each other, right? Like whatever, like I'm sure there are like things, yeah, that that Jay has implemented. Like we really want to have kind of create that kind of community where we can ask questions and, and learn from each other. And hopefully we'll have more and more initiatives like this, um, trying to um, you know, get more, a more diverse um community. Um in open source and cloud native. And one thing that I wanted to mention, I put it at the top of the agenda, it's like, uh, if you added this uh, meeting to your um, calendar with uh, the CNCF calendar, it is recurring, it does not make it recurring, you have to do it manually. So I just wanted to mention that. So the next one will not be there. So you have to automatically make it um, so, um, yeah. So you don't miss, miss our next one. Unfortunately, I don't know. It's kind of a weird that it needs that manual step. But OK, so um, just going through the agenda. And again, like anyone at any time can add points there. Are, the, the agenda is pinned to our channel. I um, make a little, we'll make a little note before the meeting starts uh, a day before. Whatever you want to talk about, this is our meeting. Shouldn't be a monologue. So. We all participate, we all drive um, the agenda. So feel free to add uh, whatever you think we should be discussing here. Um, I did add a few uh, things because I think we have the um, Google Doc and the, um, the um, issue. Uh, and I think the goals were kind of like um, broken down by audience, but I think based on a post that that Rob uh, wrote and like, and I don't know, I was like thinking basically, I think there are like three goals and I wanted to kind of define those, right? Like the first goal or they're not uh, prior in priority, like three different, very different goals. Like one is get more deaf and hard of hearing individual into cloud native and open source, right? The next one would be ensure that deaf and hard of hearing are more visible without within the cloud native community and can participate in pl uh, public discourse, uh, right? And then I think the other one is like uh, encouraging more employees to hire deaf and hard of hearing individuals. And 
including like educating them what does it take and then like of course all of that uh with uh with the help of the cncf so i think that was all in there but i thought like just creating those like kind of summarizing in them and those three overarching goals uh, again just put them there like if you disagree or if, if you want to tweak but i thought like it would be good to have it more like summarized and like three one two three um does that sound i think like it sounded like it was kind of like where we we're going so going with but um so question in the agenda um you see we we've got two different ones one that's labeled cncf tag contributors and then there's the other one that was uh, deaf and hard of hearing. Two agendas? There is just one doc. There's two, no, two documents. There's two documents. Oh, two documents. Yeah, one is the agenda. Yes. Oh. So which one are you looking at? Oh, people have been posting. So I don't know. I, yeah, just... I think to clar clarify, Catherine, to clarify, um, when I loaded the document, the first on the agenda, there was it, all, all the, the meeting. It had a link to a um, that there is another document. So I'll drop both. I think only it's hard to there's nothing in there. So I'll drop both quickly. Okay, you're to breaking up a little bit, Rian. I don't know, like the internet. Oh, so I don't know which doc. I've just put like agenda. Then we have a brainstorming doc. But now they're okay. without. I see so the these, one. I see this. Well, the one with agenda document, that's the one that you're talking about. That's when you're reading from, yes? Yeah, the one that, exactly. That's the one that we're going to hey, use hey. at the meeting. Uh, and then um, people can add their names, and then, yeah, that's where we discuss what we'll talk about, right? And then there's the other one, which is a brainstorming doc, right? That where we have like our goals and so on. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, lots of documents. I know. Sorry about the confusion. Okay, so now we are. I think it just helps. Yeah, you get a lot of <laughs> juggling a lot with you know the documents and the Zoom and and yeah. Just wanted to make sure that everybody was looking at the right place and being able to follow the discussion. Awesome, thank you. Yeah. Um, okay, so and yeah, there I kind of posted the three uh, goals that I thought we had in the brainstorming doc that were more broken down between audiences, but I thought like maybe just like summarizing them and like putting because they all I think go like if we kind of put them down they're like all kind of um the over like the overall goal is, is like can be defined uh, under one of those three um points here um okay uh and then um yeah I think like right now our top priority I don't know if it's that much top priority now because we have like a kind of nice healthy like group size of people I mean I think like especially for a working group having like 30 people is not really feasible right so um um but I think we still want to identify more deaf and hard of hearing to join our effort whether to kind of be active contributors or um just know that we exist, uh, that can provide feedback, and so we can reach them, right? So I think we should still continue to do that. So we have awareness activities. Um, so we did submit a lightning talk for KubeCon, um, and it's lightning talks are five minutes, and the idea is to talk about this initiative and say, like, this is there, please, please get the word out. And then after John and I submitted, like Ian said, that they would be there, so like if we get that of course Ian would have to be on stage as well 
Um, and then um, we also have the Montana track, which is um, um, a talk that I'm pretty sure we're going to get that because it's a different it's a different category than their regular submission. And um, Josh um, proposed a really great topic um, called welcoming all contributors. And so um, Jay would be there as well talking about uh, his initiative and Ian would present like whatever. We're hoping that we have will have made some progress. So and the idea is to present what this group has worked on because uh, uh, KubeCon is in November. So there's like some time to do stuff. Um, so that will be great as well. Um, so we're still doing the coordinated social media campaign. We should continue to do that because we have found many of you because of that. So um, definitely something we should continue. Also working with the CNCF PR team. Um, congrats again uh, to Rob for his um, interview. That was really cool. Um, and yeah, this uh, also like the, the the PR team is super excited <laughs> about this initiative and that really helps. I want to keep them excited so that they become our allies and, and want to kind of push and kind of help us get the word out as well. And then I think like reaching out to organizations, right? So I reached out to uh, uh, RIT uh, and got a very excited email, but then kind of it was dead. So I'm hoping because of the holidays. But the question is here, like, do you know any other organizations we should kind of reach out to, right? Like, like who else can like not it doesn't like some people may want to really participate some people may just want to kind of get the word out but anyone who is who works with uh, the deaf and hard of hearing in tech specific like they can help us get the word out right um so do you know anyone um have any contacts any so if so please let's reach out to them because the more people know about it the better Yeah, we're actually going to be reaching out to a deaf professional Slack group. Oh, we already have. Uh, sorry, that was the interpreter. Um, so a lot of people are here from that. So it was because of the deaf professional Slack group. And um, having that connection with them has made it so that when things start happening, we can spread the word there. So we do have relationships there, um, awesome. which then would be different schools, um, different connections there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there, yes, there is one. We, we've reached out to Gallaudet and also uh, Dr. Raja, I believe we've reached out to him. Yeah. I think that was me, right, Ian? I think it was you. Yes, I think it was you. <laughs> Yeah. Um, yeah, I wasn't sure if someone else also reached out to the same person, but it's like, because I know I talked to Raja. <laughs> um, um, yeah, and I think another thing, and that's like me as a marketer speaking, right? Because it's like, <laughs> so whenever you have like, you want to raise awareness or something, it's not a one-off thing, right? It's not one tweet. It's not one. So I think, uh, Ian, that's exactly right. So as we do, pro like, we have to create excitement, you know, like, as we um, have, like, action items or did something, uh, mention it to that Slack group, hey, we've done this, you know, maybe, like, our video, um, like, so that people can see progress is made and and get that excitement so, so people join, because... Um, it takes time sometimes, like several touch points until someone actually uh, um, uh, decides to to um, uh, to come. Um, and then, like in that like awareness um, kind of bucket, things that we could do as well is I would love to create like occasional uh, CNCF blog posts where we talk about why this initiative is important. Maybe like feature. Uh, one or two of you about your background, why you're in tech, what what are the challenges that you faced, and why you think important. Like you know, like little things that are like about people, uh, and and uh, that's very engaging, and then continuously kind of push that story out. You know, that so that people see about like the, the the importance that it is and the value that you're bringing to your organization. So, same thing. Uh, the CNCF has live streams. I would love at some point to have like a 
we have to organize with uh, uh, that we have uh, interpreters and so on, but like have a, a panel discussion with some of you where you talk, discuss about you know, being deaf in tech, the same thing, like challenges and why, like it's always like kind of the same theme, different people, different, but it's like repeat, repeat, repeat. We need to repeat it until people, enough people see it, people remember, right? So it's like always repetition is really important. Um, anything, any comments or questions regarding that? Um, yeah, just in regard to reaching out to other organizations or people oh, in general. Oh. Um, Rob oh, sorry. Was sorry. <laughs> Uh, go ahead, Jay. Robert's saying, go ahead, Jay, and then I'll go next. Okay. Apologies. Um, yeah, in regard to reaching out to organizations or others in general, um, is it worth developing um, perhaps some vis vision or mission statements that are really um, clear and concise so people can understand um, what our intent is and how we hope to work with, the, um, with others? Um, because, like, for instance, I've just connected with a uh, national deaf education provider here called uh, Kotakuru, or I think I mentioned them to you, Ian, in our comms recently. Um, so we had a really good meeting, um, but it was it took quite a while for us to sort of work through exactly what our intent was. And, and I explained that it was a new and developing initiative. And, you know, by the time I'd given a bit more context about, you know, open source and CNCF and things in general, it, it took a little while to sort of get to the core of what what we needed to discuss. So, would it be worth um, developing some uh, consistent messaging in terms of how we like? Is there something different between how we approach organisations as opposed to individuals in general via the social media platforms? What's everyone's thoughts? So, basically, like a pitch, right? Like, how do you pitch the initiative to someone, right? It's kind yeah, of like well, how do you how do you how do you make it appealing or like explain what it is depending if it's like a if it's like a um, like an educational institution they matter they they will care about different things so how do you explain what this is and why they should uh, participate right for different audiences? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's um, something I just want to be respectful of in general. Um, part of that conversation, for instance, came up. That, um, that they don't or some of their staff don't like to use the term hard of hearing um, because there's some sentiment that it that comes from like a, a deficit perspective and that's the first time I'd had that conversation or heard that feedback myself so it's just trying to understand yeah what is what is going to be the the best way to approach and, and discuss this initiative going forward that considers those sorts of things. Yeah, so we had a discussion about how to call it yeah right and then or how to actually how to abbreviate it but i think like um yeah. uh, everyone here was was very um was, did, didn't seem like like hard of hearing deaf and hard of hearing seemed to be like what a lot of people seemed like everyone was using so cool. i didn't know that some people found that kind of offensive because it's a deficit but i, I didn't hear it here yeah, it's very popular. Yeah. Oh, me, me neither. And this is, um, this is Ian. Um, I think that uh, it depends if you're in the U.S. versus uh, New Zealand. There may be different perspectives. Mm. Uh, and there are people uh, from France who. Oh, there, there may be people from France, and I don't know what language they use. This is Rob. Uh, sign, just like sign language is different all over the world. So the terms are going to be different. The, the, the language use will be different. Labeling will be different. Perspectives, right, all over the world. Um, yes, so we'll have yes, to contend, uh, we'll, yeah, we'll we are. We'll just have to contend um, with that. Um, and how do you plan to incorporate intersectionality, uh, you know, where we have, you know, if we get all, we all get together, 
you know, we talk about minority or underserved populations. Um, if, if, you know, are we going to have a big event with the whole group coming together? Uh, like a, a conference, you know, we want to make sure that we're going to, we get together while we overcome um, the perspective um, that we can't, you know, talk about things that we cannot do. I think Emmanuel wanted to say something. Oh. It, so that's my question. Is there a plan to have an event? That's my question. Oh, so there was, sorry, I was like, so, I mean, this is our very, this is our first meeting, so. I don't know, this is our group. Rob, you're part of the group. So this is, we can, you know, if that's something that we want to do, maybe I would love for at some point people to say like, hey, let's meet at KubeCon and do something there or somewhere else, you know, like, like a specific event. I did not think about that, but why not? But it's like, those are like, I think these are things that we can, um, brainstorm here, uh, think about how could we make it happen. And it's up to us to kind of see what we would need to ask the CNCF to do. And it's like, I would love for that. I would love to meet every one of you <laughs> in person. So um, I think the sky is the limit. We have to just come up with ideas, see that enough people are interested, of course, like if it's just two people interested, it's gonna be a little difficult to say like, let's do an event, but uh, I mean, I would love for us to say like, okay, we'll have, let's say in six months, it's very, uh, I don't think that's very feasible, but let's say in six months, we have a hundred people uh, uh, who are deaf in tech in our channel, right? And then we can do like a poll and say like, hey, um, we would like to do a meetup or something. And then people say yes and want to. It's like, yes, uh, I would love for that. But it's difficult to say now if we don't know who the community, if we cannot reach it, we don't know, you know, like we need to kind of build that community, see the interest and more feasible I would think oh oh Ian wants to say just like one quickly before um is to start with okay a CNCF event like like KubeCon say like okay let's try to have several people who want like who is interested let's meet there do something within KubeCon and then kind of grow from there um sorry Ian I fully agree with you um and I'd like to also um, pose the idea that we need to be reasonable because there's going to be a lot of work. We have history of doing this work in the past. Uh, in the past, we have DEF CON. Um, we had a group of six uh, to uh, to ten deaf people that went to this conference every year. In the past, we had enough people that went, we, enough people that that would provide. We have we reached we, critical mass. Thank you. We reached a critical mass. And we, you know, we, 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 people were compelled. People were interested. We, we start, started from there. If we start there, more people will join. You know, we could see who's interested in going and then we can, we can check in with people. Who's gonna be going to Chicago to KubeCon and then go from there too? So we have Ian from like, did you just like, Rob, did you just also say yes or to KubeCon? I agree with Ian, just thumbs oh. up. Okay. A critical mass is okay. key. Okay. And yeah. if, if we're visible, 
and people are interested. Uh, you know, people there at the conference see this opportunity. They see this group of people um, that will, you know, that will keep us in mind, especially when they're hiring or when they're communicating or networking. They'll keep deaf and hard of hearing people in mind. Yeah, I agree. And I think and the more visible we are, the better we are. It's almost like marketing. Yeah. Yeah, it is marketing too. I know like a lot of people say it's like a, oops. Right, it's a, uh, it's, you're gonna embed into their subconscious yeah. that we're out there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I wanna emphasize it's a part, like it lays within this group with the people, right? People need to be committed. We need to grow the group and people, it's like, if people, you know, like we cannot do this without people who, want to make change who are saying okay we, we want to show uh, uh show up so uh, people see us so and for that reason especially for the visibility i would love to have kubecon talks where you have you know people deaf people talking you know like presenting and not only about uh, uh, um accessibility i think like you I, you know, like it's 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 important to talk about accessibility, but also like just it's not you're not you, you're much more than that. You're also technical people. So it's like about all all the, all the topics, right? Uh, being visible, as 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 you said, Rob, that that employers are there can see you. It only happens people. You can only be top of mind if you're visible, right? And I think what we are trying one of the goals, at least that I think are really important, is make you more visible, right? By being at conferences, by talking to uh to media uh by participating in panels you know and um but for that we need as, as well like a critical mass right and and engagement and and make sure that everyone yeah is is working towards those goals but i think it's all feasible all right it's uh, time to start badgering my company to send me there. <laughs> that would be awesome. <laughs> um, quick question to the both interpreters. Are you, do you need to leave at 45 minutes? Um, I can stay. Amber, can you stay? Okay. Great. We're here. I can okay. stay, and now's a good switch time since we kind of paused. <laughs> um, awesome. And then, okay, so then I kind of made like a pro proposed kind of action plan. So I think we do need, as I mentioned, like awareness is really important, and awareness and visibility. We just talked exactly about that, right? Visibility is important for just as important as all the other aspects. Uh, then talking about PR opportunities, participating in panel discussion, conference talk, continuously pushing through social media. So really making sure that in our community, deaf and hard of hearing are part of this community. We're here, right? Like we're visible, you know, like it is continuously. It's not ongoing. We need to make sure that we do that. Um, and um, yeah, I created that mark uh, social media calendar. So uh, the the goal is to have one person tweet per uh, tweet, not tweet, like whatever social media uh, you want to use uh, per week. Um, if uh, at least once a week, like if we have something uh, uh, new, like uh, Rob's uh, video interview, of course we can do more or uh, uh, anything that we have to announce. Uh, but yeah, like if you just want to put your names down there, and then just we make we're short. Sure it's a good way to kind of make sure that we don't forget and we continuously push. And then again, the CNCF is super on board, their social media team and PR team, so they will retweet, uh, repost and so on. So uh, let's do that. Uh, and then um, I had a question. Are there any deaf heart and hard of hearing tech events or events meetup Slack channel? We already talked about that, but we probably talked about that. We would have... I don't know if there are any events specifically. Yeah. Okay. Thought I might ask. <laughs> um, okay. And then also I wanted to make really clear, like, um, oops, Ian, sorry. DEF CON. 
Robert's saying DEF CON. Uh, oh, yeah. Ian's like, well, that, that shut down. Yeah, that shut down. Oh, okay. Unfortunately, there was a, like a conflict with the conference and then it made it so, yeah, deaf people weren't going. Anyway, it's done. He says, so basically, cube, cube cons are back up, huh? Ian's yeah. like, precisely, <laughs> precisely. <laughs> Well, well we definitely I'm I'm up for that. Um and then so I also wanted to make clear uh, the difference between like being part of the team or like the and community, right? Like of course we want to have a team which uh like are people who are actively participating, willing to do some work, right? Join the meetings. Uh we don't expect everyone to be at every meeting and do all the time like so, but it's like just being uh being active right and um um yeah it doesn't mean that you have to attend every meeting uh and some team members will probably turn into uh like per people of the community you always lose people right who will have like less and more time and then uh the community that's i think which we really need to grow and i would love for the the Slack channel to become that meeting point for all deaf and hard of hearing because we need to reach people, right? Like for instance, uh, finding out who is going to KubeCon, right? Like we need to find out like, or who is interested. Maybe if people know that a group is going, that will make it much more attractive to go because then we can do as Josh um, uh, suggested, maybe like a lunch or like something within uh, uh, at KubeCon where we can do something for uh, the community. So having a way to reach people is super important right like and maybe like re request feedback not again not everyone has to do the work we also need people just to to be there and interested like and if we create an artifact just post it on the slack channel say like hey do you have any feedback you know if we all work on it but like it would be great if 20 people could you know look at it and have more uh, uh, eyeballs in it um maybe we need um we have a survey right or something that we wanted to do so we can say like hey cncf like we have 20 people who are really interested and want to do this so it's like just backing it up so we cannot we're not just asking the cncf for certain things but we can say here there's actually people interested in that so um so i think it's really important to grow that community and again not everyone has to be part of that i mean I would love that the more people are involved and want to be involved, but like again, there is no pressure, and like I think we need to kind of have like a critical mass there to, um, um, yeah, just to 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 do more and 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 provide specific guidance. Um, any questions or comments on that? Um, oh. Thank you. Thank you. I feel like we'll get in a cadence. We we'll get we'll get going and it'll go smoother, you know, monthly. Yeah. Um, so okay, so that's like the 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 and Ian thing. says, which we just got. Yeah, I, I was just saying we just set this whole thing up. So I know, I know. It's it's <laughs> I think it's great so far. Absolutely, agree. Yeah. Um, so oh, says, uh, thank you so much for your support, Catherine. Really, with everything, getting getting us involved, and really just very much appreciate your support in this. No, it makes me really happy. Well. It makes me really happy. Um, okay, so that is kind of the awareness thing that is really important, right? We need to grow the community. Always like be out there, and then of course just talking about it is not important. So we really need to develop the artifacts, right? <laughs> it's like the things recommendation and so I linked in the doc to that working doc that's the doc with the audiences and so on so that document is there to brainstorm and ideally uh, and then we have the issue as well which I'm going to link there we don't need to look at it right now but so the issue basically once we are happy with something we just put it there that's kind of the public what we kind of put to the public right and if I each time I've updated, I put it updated and then the date so that people know that things are moving forward. Um, so we do have kind of all these different audiences and we agreed that those are the right audiences and kind of the goals that we want to do. Um, so 
I, I would suggest that the people, individuals of each audience should kind of uh, target, like, like work on the audience they belong to, right? Like for instance, we don't have anyone in academia yet, but it would be great to find people in academia who can um, uh, um, focus on how, or like create recommendation, what do, what does, does the university need? What tools do they need if they wanna teach this to, student, uh, to students, right? Kind of, and then we have um, um, people who are in tech, um, um, like a, a, a deaf and hard of hearing in tech, but not in cloud native. Oops. I gotta run too. Robert just said, I got to run too. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we're after the 45 minutes. So I think everybody's starting to bounce up and drop off. Okay. Um, I mean, we can continue the conversation uh, on, on Slack as well or the next meeting. I mean, we had now with the, a little bit more with the initial kickoff, I think it was a little slower. Okay. okay. Um, yeah, I mean, um, yeah, let's just continue on on Slack, see like if we have people who want to uh, participate in different um, areas and then and then we'll take it from there. And Josh has his hand up. Pardon me? Josh has his hand up. Oh, sorry, Josh. <laughs> yeah, um, just to continue, uh, do we have a dedicated Slack channel for this group? Yes. Okay, uh, I'll get on it and then I will ask my remaining question. Okay, cool. Then uh, let's just stick because I think we stick with the 45 minutes because that was the uh, uh, time for the interpreters. Um, so um, we want to keep it by that too because we don't want to ex ex uh, ex um, abuse their kindness either. So, okay. Well, thanks everyone. And then let's continue the conversation. Slack. Great first meeting. Awesome. Thanks again, Catherine. Good to meet you all. Thanks, bye.